Now, for anyone that isn't familiar with Ilkley Moor, I'll just go into a little bit of its background. So Ilkley Moor is one of a number of moors that make up the larger Rombolds Moor, the names of which usually come from the nearest town. For example, you have Ilkley, Burley, Hawksworth, Bailden, Bingley, Morton and Addingham Moors. The moors carry a vast amount of history of them and have the largest concentration of cup and ring marked stones in England dating back to the Neolithic period, with notable attractions being the swastika stones and a small stone circle known as the Twelve Apostles. For this however, we only need to go back to 1987, December 1st 1987 to be precise. So, on the morning in question, retired police officer Philip Spencer had been walking across Ilkley Moor to visit his father-in-law who lived in East Morton. Philip often walked this route across the moor as he enjoyed photographing the landscape in the early morning light. As on many other occasions, he had brought along his camera and a compass in case of fog. According to Spencer, he was walking up a small hill when he noticed an odd looking figure just up ahead of the trail of him. The creature in question was dark green and about four feet tall with an oversized head and long thin arms. As Spencer noticed the creature, it seemed to gesture towards him as if telling him to stay away. Regardless of this, Spencer took out his camera and snapped this shot. Philip then began after the creature after it started to flee but unfortunately lost it within the thick fog of the moors. According to Spencer, it was at this point from within the fog a craft arose and disappeared into the sky. He described the craft as whitish in colour and consisted of two saucer shaped parts that were attached, with one being on top of the other. Unfortunately, Spencer failed to capture a snap of the craft. Instead of continuing towards his father-in-law's house, Spencer headed towards another town which was about half an hour away. Upon arriving at his destination, he noticed it was about two hours later in the day than he expected it to be. Furthermore, the compass that he had taken with him was pointed in the opposite direction that he should have been facing. In the days following the incident, Spencer contacted two UFO researchers, Jenny Randalls and Peter Hugh. Hugh himself claimed to have been extremely sceptical at first, but later came to believe Philip Spencer's account. As the story was quickly picked up by various news outlets, Spencer insisted on keeping his anonymity. In many of the news reports following the incident, it was made clear that Spencer made no money from telling his story. Hugh paid a visit to the site of the incident and sent the photograph to a number of experts, including the Kodak Laboratory in Hemel Hempstead, who said that they could not detect any evidence of tampering. A wildlife photographer who examined the photograph said that it was not a picture of any known animal. Dr. Bruce Maccabee, a US Navy optics expert and UFOologist, concluded that the photograph was, in his own words, too grainy for proper testing. According to UFOologist Nick Redfern, a mere few days after the incident, the Ministry of Defence opened a file on Philip Spencer and sent two men in black to his home to intimidate him into silence. Following the incident, Spencer claimed to be experiencing strange dreams. He was subsequently advised to undergo regressive hypnotherapy, which was carried out by Dr. Jim Singleton on the 16th of March, 1988. Whilst under hypnosis, Spencer's original account of the incident changed. Singleton referred to the resulting memories from the session as a genuine recall. Philip Spencer now recalled that upon seeing the creature on the hill, that he became instantly paralyzed. From here, he was then lifted up and pulled into the craft. As he entered, a disembodied voice told him to be calm. Following this, Spencer was subjected to medical experiments by a group of aliens who started inserting items into his nose and mouth. After this, he was given a tour of the craft and shown a film in which apocalyptic imagery, including nuclear explosions, famines and floods featured prominently. He was then shown a second film, although he has never revealed its contents saying that his abductors did not want humanity to know. Following this, Spencer was returned to Ilkley Moor, where he then took his famous photograph. Furthermore, he claimed that rather than gesturing that he come no further, the alien was actually waving goodbye to him. It's worth mentioning that Ilkley Moor is located in close proximity to both RAF Menwith Hill and Leeds Bradford Airport. Menwith Hill is known to provide communications and intelligence support to both the United Kingdom and United States. 
The site contains an extensive satellite ground station and is a communication intercept and missile warning site. The facility has been described as the largest electronic monitoring station in the world. Air Force bases such as these are widely known to be hotspots for UFO activity, with incidents such as the Rendlesham Forest Lights being well known. Whether this adds weight to the argument that the Ilkley-Moore UFO sightings are legitimate, I will leave to interpretation. The Ilkley-Moore UFO incident was widely reported in the media around the world at the time, and the photo is still considered to be some of the best evidence we have of the existence of extraterrestrial life. It's interesting to note that since Philip Spencer's account, further strange happenings have occurred in the years since, notably in 2010 when a man from the nearby village of Menston reported seeing an unidentified flying object moving across the sky of Rombold's Moor. He described what he believed to be a light which was travelling beyond the speed of sound, crossing the moor on the early hours of the 22nd of December. A few weeks later, a dog walker claimed that a strange object came from behind and flew over him at significant speed before disappearing over the nearby Panorama Woods. The culmination of sightings, as well as the remoteness of the moors themselves, seems to lend credence to the idea that there could be something truly strange going on over the skies of this vast, uninhabited area of Yorkshire. As for Philip Spencer, he remains steadfast to this day with the belief in what he saw. Furthermore, as mentioned previously, he made no money from telling his story and sought no fame from the incident, as the name Philip Spencer is a pseudonym that he chose to protect his anonymity. Whatever opinions sceptics and believers alike may hold, the case still baffles experts and is as compelling and intriguing a tale as they come. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this video then please give a like and subscribe to the channel as it really helps out a lot.